All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, mind shifters. Um, we're at day two, which is identifying and releasing limiting beliefs, spotting your secret saboteurs. And I realized about like halfway through yesterday that I really didn't introduce myself. So I was like a little frazzled after trying to get Zoom to connect to the Facebook group that I completely forgot. Um, Facebook kind of changed some ways. So you used to be able to just stream really easily from Zoom into Facebook. And now you've got, there's this big workaround that you have to go through and it wasn't working. It was frustrating and I couldn't get it today either. So, um, but I forget, completely forgot. So I know I did it in the welcome video, but just in case that you missed it, I, I just want to take a quick opportunity to do that now. So um, I'm Tanya Richards, and I'm a certified mindset coach, energetic healer, and an entrepreneur. I met my husband, Kevin, in our small little town of Grand Lake 12 years ago, and we were married in 2016. I have two children. Shayla is 27, and she's blessed me with three grandchildren. Uh, the oldest, Adeline, is nine, Caden is seven, and Aaliyah is five. And my son, Daniel, will be 18 in August, and he's going to be a senior in high school at uh, Middle Park High School here in Granby. And I bought a food truck two years ago to get out of corporate America and to stop punching the clock for someone else. And I wanted to create income while I worked on my coaching business. So when I say I put my heart and soul into this, I... I have done that with education, certifications, um, putting together my Authentically Out Loud program so that I can teach you the very concepts that have changed my life. So thank you for, for putting your faith and your trust in me as we embark on this masterclass together. So I want to announce the winner for yesterday's homework drawing. That was um, Paige. Yay, Paige. Thank you for completing your homework. Um, at the end of the week, after we do the prizes, the prize drawings every morning, I will uh, mail out the prizes next week because you may just, you may win more than once. So today, this is a fun topic. We're going to dive into the depths of our subconscious and our conscious mind and how, how our limiting beliefs are formed. And we're going to talk about the iceberg principle, the map of consciousness, plus learn to reframe your negative thoughts into positive affirmations. So sound good? All right. So first off, what is a limiting belief? I call them bullshit beliefs because that's exactly what they are. And a limiting bullshit belief is a thought or a conviction that restricts you in some ways. So these beliefs are often deeply ingrained and usually they stem from past experiences. Um, it could be cultural conditioning or just learned behaviors from when you were a child. And they act as barriers that literally prevent you from achieving your full potential, from pursuing your goals or experiencing personal growth. And they Often they operate unconsciously and they, they influence everything you do. They influence your behavior, your emotions, and your decision-making. So here's a crazy, crazy statistic. By the time that you're in first grade, 80 to 85% of your beliefs are already formed. And 95% of our thoughts are just subconscious and they're running in the background. And in any given day, we have we average 70,000 thoughts. So that is how important it is to recognize those thoughts that hold us back and just get rid of them altogether. And a lot of what has happened to you to create some of these limiting beliefs is something that your parents or your grandparents or even an aunt and uncle have gone through. And there's no fault on them. They only knew what they were taught. And therefore, they taught you the same. And therefore, if you have children, I started making those same mistakes, teaching the, my kids the exact same things that I was taught. And you're not going to be able to change them. You're not going to be able to change their thinking. 
but you are in control of you and can change how you think and what you believe. So when we talk about the characteristics of limiting beliefs, they're, they're very self-defeating. They, they often manifest as negative self-talk or internal narratives that it, they undermine your self-confidence and your motivation. They can be restrictive. They create mental barriers that limit the range of what you believe is possible for you to achieve. Many, many limiting beliefs are based on fear of failure, rejection, or inadequacy. They are persistent. They are very persistent. These beliefs, they can be stubborn and persistent despite the evidence to the contrary. So even though you may look at them and be like, no, that's not true. I can do this. Your beliefs in your subconscious are telling you that you can't. And like I just said, they're unconscious. They often operate below the level of your conscious awareness. So they influence your behavior and decisions without you even realizing it. So with this said, I want to take a look at the iceberg principle. And I'm going to share my screen and show that there's a copy of this in the workbook. But um, just to have this kind of on like a bit bigger picture here. So you've got the iceberg principle. And in the, the vast expanse of the human mind, there lies this iceberg of immense complexity and depth. And it's floating within the ocean of our psyche. And this iceberg represents the dual realms of our conscious and the, um, the subconscious mind. So the conscious mind is what you see that's visible here above the water. And then this vast amount down here, the hidden expanse of the subconscious mind, it's lurking deep beneath the surface. So when you're looking at the tip of the iceberg that breaches the water surface, that's our conscious mind. And this is where we have the realm of awareness, the seat of our rational thoughts, our deliberate choices and waking perceptions, right? It's the process of the here and the now, making decisions based on logic and, and interact with the world around us. And despite the visibility and the control, it seems that it has, the conscious mind represents only such a small fraction of our mental capacity. So you can see that you know, beneath, beneath the waterline is this colossal mass of the iceberg, right? This is why the Titanic sank, because it only saw this little piece here. It didn't see all of this that was below the surface. So this holds the sum of all of our past experiences, our beliefs, our emotions, memories, the skills that we've required or acquired over a lifetime. It's uh, a reservoir of automatic processes uh, running beneath the threshold of our conscious awareness, influences our behavior in ways that we might not even realize. This is a, a hidden domain and it governs our, governs our automatic bodily functions, our habits, emotional responses, and those deeply, deeply ingrained beliefs. It's where your dreams are woven, where our deepest fears and desires lie. So when you look at the relationship between your conscious and your subconscious mind, it's both very complex and they're interdependent on each other. The conscious mind up here with its ability to reason and analyze often, often believes that it's in control. It thinks it's making decisions based on logic and willpower, but it's continually influenced by the undercurrents of the subconscious, which can sabotage or support conscious intentions based on the programming it has received over the years. So for instance, um, someone might consciously decide to change a bad habit, such as smoking or overeating, and they think they can use willpower and logical reasoning, but if the subconscious mind holds those underlying beliefs that contradict this decision, perhaps, you know, associating that habit with comfort 
or stress release, the effort can be undermined by the hidden opposition. So the subconscious mind's immense power can drive behaviors and reactions that are seemingly out of control. And they pull us in a direction that we might not consciously choose. So if you think about somebody who wants to stop smoking or, you know, for me, it's always been dieting and eating. And it wasn't until <clears throat> I started my own mindset journey that I learned this. I just thought, you know, what the fuck, Tanya, you can't, why can't you stop putting food in your face? You know, and you, it was, it was so much more than that. It was learning that, um, emotions were driving a lot of what I was doing. It was comfort. It was different types of food represented different types of, um, emotions that I was needing to overcome. So, you know, if I had something that was really bothering me and I was trying to work through, I was craving more like crunchy, salty snacks. And if it was more, um, like sadness or depression, then it was more like chocolates and sweets. And so just being able to be aware of that and know like, okay, I'm having, I'm having this craving this desire that, you know, you can't get it out of your head where you're like, just no, just don't do it. Just don't do it. And I know, I know you've all felt this in some level may not be eating, but, um, so once I was aware of this, then I'm able to say, okay, what is the underlying cause that's sending me to the refrigerator or sending me to the pantry? Because there's something else happening. Um, same with smoking. A lot of times it's more than that. It's a stress relief. It's, I've never smoked. So, you know, I don't know. A lot of people like have that habit, the hand to mouth. So then they end up gaining weight because then they start eating to um, replace that. So that's kind of an example. So, you know, to truly understand and influence our behavior and beliefs, we've got to dive beneath the surface. We've got to explore the depths of the subconscious mind. And this exploration can involve reflection, meditation, therapy, other practices aimed at bringing subconscious content into your conscious awareness. And by making the unconscious conscious, then we can, then we begin to unravel that complex web of beliefs and emotions and memories that drive our behavior. And this process allows us to be, to reprogram the subconscious. So we can align it more closely with our conscious goals and desires, much like steering the course of the iceberg from beneath the depths. So the iceberg of the conscious and subconscious mind is, it's a metaphor for the complexity of human cognition and behavior. So navigating this iceberg requires courage. It requires awareness and willingness to explore the unseen depths of our psyche. And in doing so, we can harness the power of both the subconscious and the conscious mind, steering ourselves toward greater understanding, healing, and personal growth. So before we move to the conscious mind, um, do you have any questions or anything about, you know, below the surface? And no, no questions no? at the moment. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to tell you that this is the type of work that you'll be doing inside the Authentically Out Loud program. We will keep this type of material in the front of your mind so that you can utilize the tools and the resources to continue to move forward and continue to make progress. So when we talk about the role of the conscious mind, while much of the work involves reprogramming the subconscious, the conscious mind plays a vital role in directing attention toward these goals and maintaining your motivation. So it's the conscious mind that decides to embark on this journey of transformation, and it takes that deliberate step toward change. It also serves as a gatekeeper choosing which influences and messages to accept or reject as you work to reinforce the new mindset that you're creating. And 
we're going to talk a little bit kind of how the conscious and it works with what's called the map of consciousness. Pull that up here. Um, this is outlined by Dr. David Hawkins, and it's a fascinating framework that just categorizes various states of human awareness into a, a hierarchy based on their vibrational frequencies. So this hierarchy ranges from low energy states, such as, you know, shame and guilt through to neutral states like courage and onto higher energy states like love, peace, and enlightenment. And each level is associated with specific emotions, attitudes, behaviors, worldviews, and it's quantified using a scale from one to 1000, where the higher numbers correspond to higher levels of consciousness. So to understand the levels, um, there are lower energy states. Oh, I talked about that. Um, so if you look at this bottom part here, you've got shame at the very bottom. These are destructive energy patterns up to pride. And then you start getting into the green here when you've got courage. Life is exciting. You've hit a level of empowerment um, and neutrality. Energy becomes very positive. You're beginning, it's the beginning of your inner confidence. Willingness, so you've got success. Success, growth is rapid. Overcome inner resistance. You know, major transformations. You are the source and creator of life. And, you know, enlightenment up here is the creative energy in here. So mostly I would say the average person is probably right in these areas here. So it's a great way to take a look and just kind of see where you're at on this map. So let's kind of take a look at some limiting beliefs. I'm gonna stop my share here. And what do those look like? What are some examples of limiting beliefs? Um, some are, um, I am not good enough. I will never be successful. I don't deserve to be happy. Even though you may not say I don't deserve to be happy, that is what your mind is thinking. I can't change. I always fail at everything I try. I am not smart enough, creative enough, talented enough, whatever enough that you put in there. I'm too old. I'm too young to start something new. So those are some examples. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to reframe those as well. So the impact of these limiting beliefs, they prevent you from taking risks or pursuing opportunities that could lead to success. They affect your relationships because they can create negative patterns in your personal and your professional relationships. They decrease self-esteem. So they erode your self-confidence and your self-worth. They limit your growth by restricting your personal and professional development. So how do we now overcome those limiting beliefs? The first step is awareness. So we need to identify and acknowledge your limiting beliefs, those bullshit beliefs. We got to get rid of them. We have to challenge them. So we need to question the validity of these beliefs and look for evidence that contradicts them. We need to reframe them. So we want to replace the limiting beliefs with a more positive, empowering belief. We want to visualize use visualization techniques to imagine your future without these limiting beliefs. You want to have affirmations regularly practice positive affirmations to reinforce new empowering beliefs. And you want to take action. You want to take small steps towards goals to build confidence and demonstrate that limiting beliefs are false. So 
Uh, here's one that I had when I was looking to start a food truck. Um, I'd never owned my own business. I'd always punch the clock for somebody else. I'd worked my way up through corporate ladder, made it to the top of where I wanted to go unless I wanted to relocate. Um, but my belief was I can't start my own business. I'll, I'll fail. I'll fail. I knew it in my heart, right? Because especially a food truck, I can't cook. I don't like to cook. I'm the cook from hell. If you remember from yesterday. Um, but I reframed that. I reframed this and I put this in my think up app and I listen to it every day. I have the skills and determination to start my own business and I can learn from any challenges I face. And did I face some challenges? Absolutely. Yes. Challenges came up. So I've got some other examples. Um, I'm not good enough. This one comes up, I think, probably the most frequent. And to be able to reframe it, I am capable and worthy of success. I don't deserve happiness. I deserve to be happy and fulfilled. I always fail. Every experience is a learning opportunity and I am growing stronger every day. Limiting belief. I can't change. I have the power to create positive change in my life. Success is for others, not for me. I am deserving of success and capable of achieving my goals. So you can see how you just turn that when those negative thoughts are running through your head and they do 70,000 times a day, you just stop, reframe it and put it into a positive spin. So in your workbook, there's a couple of ways to do this. Let me find, okay. So you can use the list, which is the second one where you've got your old belief and then you can write your new belief. Maybe I'll share my screen here with this one too. Oop, share screen, screen two, share. All right, so you can write them out this way, reframe old belief and then new belief. I like to do it this way. You're not going to have enough room with seven. I guarantee you, you have more than seven limiting beliefs. So get a little handy dandy notebook. And I left my pencil, my pen. You write your limiting belief in a pencil. So you write, I am not worthy of success. And then you just go through, use like skip four or five lines, as you see here. So you're gonna write in pencil on this top line here. You can skip four or five lines and just go to the second one. Because I guarantee you, like once you start writing these out, they're, they're going to start flowing, I promise you. I filled up five pages of limiting beliefs the very first time that I did this. So I go down the next one. I am the hook from hell. Okay. And you just skip, you just skip those lines. Then you go in, grab your pen and that's when you're going to rewrite this. You've got lots of room in there. So I am worthy of success. And I deserve happiness. I am the cook from hell. I am not. I create amazing meals to delight my customers. All right. Those are two examples. So then you have, I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. 
nope, can't see it. But you've got pencil, you've got where you've rewritten it. And then you take the eraser of your pencil and you erase that limiting belief. You erase that bullshit right off of the page. And what you are left with are five pages of affirmations. All right. This is that. That's my most, that's my favorite way. You just go through brainstorm, brain dump, all those negative, negative emotions, negative thought processes, anything that you have. And you dump them. You just dump them on there. And then you're able to go back in, basically turn them around. So um, within the workbook here, I think I've got, where is it? Yep, on the bottom of this page here, it's got some ideas to get you, to get you started. You're going to need more paper. Like I said, you're going to need more paper. You're going to need more than just this and this, I promise. There is some notes and ideas on there as well. So, um, another mindset block. Oh, I've skipped this part was around, is around money. And I think that one is very, very common. Some of us grew up being told money doesn't grow on trees. We don't have the money for that. You should be thankful for what you have. So what we do in, in this case is we have put a limit or ceiling as to what our mind thinks we should earn. So if we make more money then that ceiling, then that cap that we've put on ourselves, then we go out and we spend it. We spend it because we don't believe that we should have it. We don't believe that we deserve it. We don't believe that we're worthy of it. And that's why most people who win the lottery are broke again within like two to five years. Isn't that crazy? So, all right. So this is going to be your list of affirmations once you're done. So really take time to sit down, think it through. You may have a hard time at first being able to list out those limiting beliefs quickly, but I found that once you get started, they will flow. So that is what we have for today. So let's see, your homework for today is to write out your limiting beliefs reframe them in whatever um, method you choose. Go into the Facebook group, put a new post with your key takeaways or your aha moments. And, you know, give a couple other posts some love and just show everyone that, you know, we're here, we're just, we're supporting each other. And then comment done in the homework to post to be entered into the prize drawing. Do you have any questions for me? No questions today. That was awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Well, that is it. So we will meet again here tomorrow. So remember to stay stunning, stay authentic, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Tanya. Okay.